So the sequence, interestingly, in the region, and I'm bringing to a close here uh, the first leg of the discussion, if you look at it interestingly, just about every 10 years, we've seen kind of a major theme appearing in the region. In the 60s, as I said, it's all about decolonization, independence, emancipation, the new states being born. It's actually a beautiful moment of hope, of kind of building a future. And it's also a moment of revolution, quote unquote, as such. 10 years later, there's a wake up call. The states have not really become that independent. They still very much engage with their own colonial powers. And there's a kind of a wake up call about the dependency that they have to go through. By the 80s, it's all about IMF, World Bank, good governance programs, dependency, which is a form of control, of course, for these economies and therefore these states. This is a big theme, and it's used in places like Algeria, for instance, with a lot of cunning by the state. By the 90s, we go into what I explained earlier, the failed democratization, an attempt, but a cosmetic one, a, a, a facade and a type of democratization processes. This has also left some impact on the oppositions, for instance, in Egypt. By the last decade, of course, it's all about security. Security, security, terrorism, and this builds into where we are today, which is revolutions or not. All along, during these 50, 60 years, I think four key developments took place. The first one, the first two ones, in fact, move uh, in opposition. The slow death of nationalism from the heyday of Nasser's very positive appeal to the whole of the region, this radio, Salt al Arab, which was beaming all over the Arab world, the voice of the Arabs. Uh, there's a moment of opposition on, uh, to the West, the colonial West, of course, in terms of a major experience as such, gradually disappears. From that moment to the death of Saddam Hussein, let's say 40, 50 years, you have the, the, the let's say, the weakening of the nationalist ethos in the region, which has to do essentially with the failure of these regimes to generate development, economic development in particular. The other big story, of course, is the rise of Islamism, which doesn't appear in the 90s or the 2000s or even the 80s. It starts very, very early. In fact, we tend to forget that the Islamist, Islamists, I mean by that as an ideology, I mean Islamic, Islamic, the political use of religion towards the specific advancement of Islam-related uh, agendas. That appears very early in the 20s and the 30s as an alternative way to liberate the countries from colonialism. But it's beaten by the nationalist project. And it retreats and then gradually advances. The Ikhwan in Egypt, for instance, gradually reposition themselves. Set up in 1927 already, and in other places they did. So that story has always been gradually and systemically and systematically as well uh, growing. But all the time, contestation. Contestation building because the state is not represented. So you get to where we are today, the social revolts. Please interject if you have questions for clarifications, trying to share with all of this with you in the first place. Now, what I'd like to highlight here is the notion of a path. I have heard too often over the past two years in all of the discussions that you have that the sense that democracy, democracy as, as a value, as a system, and I will not pretend to define it here, we all know that there's a very wide debate about it as a, as, a, as, a, as a constitutional arrangement, as a particular value, as a behavior, all of these together cannot materialize so immediately. It's a path. It's varied. Yours will be different than mine. It's unpredictable. It has some normative concerns, but it also built on a particular set of processes that need to, be, need to be designed, materialized, institutionalized. It's a complex, complex arrangement, but fundamentally the transition is about the possibility of charting a course. That's what the transition offers. It's only a chance too. As I said, transitions can fail. But you have a chance here to chart a new course on the basis of a new type of realities. And so this is how I think we can visualize it. A founding moment and a forward moment. I invite you to take a look at this painting, the Rakhwai Belief, La Liberté, and forget about the French flag. This is not about presenting the particular download of the French experience, far from it. It's about identifying what actually is that moves us 
move societies universally from a moment of revolution, which when you look at it has everything that we have been seeing in recent years. I hope you guys can all see. Violence, of course. It's not a violent affair. I spoke earlier about the militarization of Syria. It's always been there. Revolution has never been a peaceful affair. Particularly violent, as we said. Setting the city on fire all the way in the back. Youth, always present. The kid with a gun behind the lady. Um, and a value. In fact, oftentimes, feminine for that. This could be one of the Tunisian bloggers, Egyptian bloggers. We've seen those images. They mean something. Sometimes the media makes too much to deal with, for sure. But this is the energy moment that I'd like to see. The founding moment and the forward movement as such. And when you look at it, in fact, when you unpack this, you find how universal it is. You find even in the dynamic, even in the behavior, even in the imagery, the same logic of a position on the basis of a moment of rising up. We speak about uprisings in the Arab Spring. And you see it this vividly in this, even when it fails in China, 1989. But it's the same logic of a moment that unleashes, unleashes the potential for a future that has to be the final passage. A founding moment and a forward movement as such. This is what is, can be conceived, conceptualized rather, as this. Now, a couple of immediate prerequisites come. The first one is a moment of rupture. We can only speak of a revolution, in fact, of change in these regions if there's a moment of rupture. And it can come in different guises. Ben Ali fleeing on that Friday afternoon, January 14th, I think is an earthquake in the Arab world. I experienced it like this, my Tunisian friends, everybody that I spoke. That moment, everything changed, fear changed sides. Going from the government, which did not experience any fear, even if it was weak, to the people who realized that they could actually push one of the major police state leaders, and Ben Ali was not just any leader as such. It was a pretty uh, tough one, with Western support for that matter, to remind us. Literally fleeing. From that moment on, you have potentially disrupted. And I think, conceptually, in the mind of the people, it marks the end of the system. Has this happened elsewhere or not? This is what we have to debate and how. What it did is impact the system fundamentally. A vision has then to be born, because it's not simply about that particular episode of a flight. Of the rupture has to be translated into a vision. You do need to move towards national concord. My big question there is, is Libya there? Is even Egypt there? Syria, certainly I think we can agree that they're not there. And so on and so forth. And how realistically can we expect this to happen now? when we're saying to ourselves, as I just said a moment ago, that it takes a very long time for this to happen. But then again, think, think about Iraq. It's been a good seven, eight, nine, ten years. And look at the violence of only the past couple of days. Let's process all of this and debate it afterwards. Cohesion, consent are necessary just for the process to start, let alone succeed, only for it to actually move forward. Now, I've divided for you, in fact, what we can identify for the Arab Spring itself now as a series of systemic causes and some conjunctural ones. Some, of, some, as I said, building up of the past couple of decades and some more immediate. So, on the left side, and I've already covered some of this, over the past couple of decades we see emerging the absence of democracy. People rebel, essentially because they're not able to enjoy the freedoms that they have been demanding, whether they're modern Islamists or whether they're women's group, etc. Liberals, arbitrariness, increasingly reaching a point of saturation. At a point, every Tunisian feels that they cannot even get their own right, let alone a favor from the system. The absence of outlook, that's essentially Bouazizi. I mean, Bouazizi reacts because he, this is the little fruit seller in the countryside of Tunisia, the most basic political economy equation, he slapped around, humiliated by a policewoman because he cannot do this and he's stripped away from those basic rights. So there's a sense of desperation. That desperation is also because there's no sense of recourse, legal, so certainly, and outlook beyond that. Inequalities persisting, the police state culture, the mukhabarat, the istikhbarat, all of these kind of elements around that, 
corruption increasingly, and the centralization of power around one seat. This plays out over decades. Now, over the past three, four, five years, a couple of things have happened on the left side. First of all is the crystallization of this resentment around specific people, the Benhadis, the Mubaraks, the Essex, the Haddafis, and so on and so forth. There's a personal relationship of hatred now between the population and those that they see around them benefiting excessively from the system. It builds up to a point where it becomes personal as such. The duration, we're talking about very long periods of time, 30, 40, 50 years. It's been a very long time that these regimes have been in place. The rulers are also aging. It's not only, only that the system has been there for a long time, it's that the, the, the rulers themselves are very old. Ben Ali, Mubarak, <coughs> were barely in control of their surroundings by the end of that process. Nepotism, as I said, the people benefiting, the economic crisis. And the last two elements are this new generation, and I think it's important to highlight it. The new generation, the contestatory spirit, and these elements building up to a moment of truth. 